I just got done uh, ohming out my well motor and uh, I have the Fluke 1503. Uh, I put, uh, use these two right here for ohms. Uh, I clamped on the black to the ground at the top of the well head. And then I checked each one of these leads. Uh, this red one ended up having a burnt spot in it. But at the top of the well head, I had black clamped on to green, and then I would clamp the other one onto each wire. They all actually ohmed out. Uh, do yourself a favor, and when you uh, install the well motor, write down the date, uh, how much each one had for ohms. Uh, now I just wrote four because uh, that was rounded up, but try to be precise because um, I actually had four on R, but on Y and B I had like 3.47 on yellow and blue, or yellow and black. And so uh, I should have wrote 3.47, and then uh, that way I would know that one of them was showing a little more uh, ohms of resistance than normal, because it will conduct through the water. Then I might have been able to use my just a regular ohmmeter to find it. Um, but yeah, you know, when you install a motor, uh, ohm out the leads of each one, Write it down on your top of your well casing, and then uh, and then when you get all done wiring everything up, I would ohm it out again. I would write down those numbers, which should be exactly the same. I would go out to the 100th uh, decimal, and then when something goes wrong, you can take an ohmmeter, and you don't need a, a mega unit that way, uh, which are not cheap. I found an Asian one that was kind of cheap. Uh, but the only way I could find this, because I hadn't done all that, was to write down. Uh, I, I, so then you go to 1,000 or 500, doesn't really matter. And then you use these two terminals. This one has a button on it. It should read 550 on 500. Uh, if you got any kind of re uh, thing approaching zero, uh, then you got something that usually ends up being like 0.5 or 0.2 mega ohms or something. Um, you can also use a thousand. Should also read that on a thousand. Anything close to zero is uh, not good. So that was the only way I could find this burnt wire that was uh, the connection done. Um, I highly recommend uh, along with writing down all your ohm readings before you install everything and writing it down on the top of your wellhead along with the date. Um, you need to seal these up as good as possible. And uh, this time, uh, of course you gotta use a, a butt connector and shrink wrap, but this does not always do it. Uh, I would almost recommend doubling this up if you can. If you can find two different sizes, go one over the top of the other one, uh, one being a little bit longer than the other one. And uh, these are actually a little big, and I think that might have been the problem. But this time I'm going to put silicone all around this stuff, and then I'm going to tape it up again with the silicone squeezing out. And hopefully water does not enter it uh, this time, because my guess is water got in there and uh, over a couple years took it out so i you know i'm not an expert i'm not in the field so take this all with a grain of salt do your own research but uh just wanted to throw out there because i hadn't seen anybody say anything write down all your ohms of resistance on the top of your wheel head uh, at the motor before you hook it up and then do do ohm resistance again at the top of your wheel head Write it all down in, on the underneath side of your cover and the date. And then you can use just an ohmmeter uh, instead of having to buy a mega unit. Uh, but you know, you might only be talking about, in this case, it would have been 0.5 ohms of resistance difference, but it was just on one wire. So, yeah. Anyway, food for thought. <laughs>